all great and wonderful people. Seven days already into the month of um, October, and we are celebrating today the the memorial of Our Lady of the Rosary. What is the praying of the Rosary about? Why do we still pray the Rosary even in the twenty-first century? And what do we mean by October devotion? What is it about? How did we get here, so to so to say? Now, quickly, the October devotion is um, a devotion that started at a time when there was a ploy to Islamize Europe. The Ottomans, the Turkish Muslims, tried to invade Europe and Islamize it, and we are told that they were advancing even up to Cyprus, which was an island of Venice. And we, we may say there was some kind of tension and despair in Europe. This was the time when Pope um, Pius V was the Pope of the Catholic Church. It was also a time when the Church was just coming out of the whole Protestant Reformation movement led by, led by Luther, Martin Luther, who published his 95 Theses of um, Criticisms against the Church and led some Christians in a breakaway from the Catholic Church. So with all of these factors and circumstances of ground, on ground, Pope the V intended to form a Christian coalition, a coalition of Christian countries, Christian states, against this Muslim invasion, invasion, but it wasn't so easy for him. So one could say that he made little or no progress in this regard. So that between 1566 and 1571, much was not really achieved. Much was not achieved because first and foremost, Rome had this whole recovery, so to, to put it that way, from the protest, Protestant Reformation, the Protestant movement. France, another Christian state, had its own internal security troubles to confront. So, for many years, this coalition was not achieved until 1571, when Pope Pius V was able to mobilize the Christian country of Spain and the Christian country of Italy to form this coalition, which, is, which was known as the Holy League, as a confrontation, a resistance to the Muslim invasion. We are told that the, this mobilization saw to the, to the, this whole movement saw to the mobilization of the naval fleet of the Holy League, the Christian Crusaders, against the Turkish fleet and they encountered themselves in a battle at the Gulf of Patras in a place called Lepanto, which is what is known in history today as the Battle of Lepanto. At this time, Pope Pius V, having done his work as a leader, also called on all Christians all over the world to pray the rosary, to intensify the praying of the rosary, not like they've not been praying the rosary before now, Remember that the praying of the rosary is something far, far behind in many centuries before 1500s, 1571 or 1566, far, far behind, even before St. Dominic in the 13th century, around 1216, there was already the praying of the rosary. What we have by St. Dominic is actually a development or a, a, a structuring of the praying of the rosary and the popularization and then later after him, St. Canisius. Anyway, we are not really talking about the history of the rosary here. What I'm trying to emphasize is that Pope Francis, Pope Pius V had to say, let this praying of the rosary be intensified. Let it be more fervent so that we can gain victory over this enemy trying to conquer Europe and turn it into a Christian continent. So at Lepanto, the battle was fought in spite of the low number of army on the side of the Christian crusaders. Christians were able to conquer the Turk, Turk Muslims and defeat them. So, notwithstanding the fact that we, they didn't have enough soldiers 
to confront the, to confront the fleet of the Turks, Christians won the victory. It was actually on record, or it's actually on record that the soldiers actually the soldiers of the Turks were found to be also undisciplined. They had military indiscipline. That also worked against them. At the end of the day, Pope Pius V dedicated this victory to the acts of Christians praying the Holy Rosary and invoking the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He then declared that from that day, 7th of October, which was the very day that the battle was fought in 1571, 7th of October 1571, should be a day of Our Lady of Victory, a memorial, a feast day of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through whom Christians attained victory over the Muslims by the power of God. Well, today we call it the feast or memorial of Our Lady of the Rosary. It was Pope Gregory III who later changed it to that, from Our Lady of Victory to Our Lady of the Rosary. That is because Christians believed in the power of prayer. That's, you, you, as the Bible says, you can gather a lot of armies, gather a lot of, uh, you can gather a whole fleet of armies, gather 10 million number of horses, you can plan to build the house, but if the Lord does not go to battle with us, if the Lord does not build with us, if the Lord does not plan with us, every of our plans, every of our fighting, every of our battles will be in vain. So Christians gain victory by the intercession of the Virgin, Blessed Virgin Mary, the praying of the Rosary. As a matter of fact, history has it that churches in Rome, after the Pope made that declaration, churches in Rome are opened every day praying against the Muslim Turks. Now, as we said, why do we talk about praying the Rosary today? Because obviously no Muslim Turks are invading Europe anymore today. So why do we still talk about October devotion? That is what brings about the relevance of the Pope's declaration. The Pope realized that it wasn't just a material victory. It wasn't just a physical victory. It wasn't just a victory of um, flesh and blood. It's a spiritual victory. Christians also have spiritual battles. We don't have uh, um, Turks fighting us. We don't have Muslims trying to invade Europe. But we have battles within us, around us. The enemy of our soul, the devil, the temptations around us, the daily struggles of life that we have to go through. We can't fight them by flesh and blood. We can confront and overcome them through flesh and blood, but by the works of the Spirit through acts of prayer. And that is where the praying of the rosary comes in. Now, yes, apart from that, apart from my personal and troubles, there is also the need for peace in the world. From Afghanistan to Iraq, we all know the unrest that is there. From Nigeria to Sudan, Nigeria, Boko Haram, bandits, kidnappers, terrorists, and the fear of even Islamization in Nigeria is also there. So, it is even more relevant today than before. It is more relevant today than ever. And then, we talk about family devotion, ensuring that we unite ourselves and our families with the spirit of Mary, who prayed the Magnificat, who sang the Magnificat in praise of the power of God's glory and victory over the devil, over sin, over death, over corruption, over injustice and oppression of the poor. So in praying the rosary, we unite ourselves to this humble woman who saw that everything is obtained and attained and achieved only by the power of God, that the simplest of people, the most ordinary of people, can attain great things by connecting themselves in prayer to God. Lastly, we also have to ask, how do we pray the rosary today? The jet age, the age where everyone is in a, in a hurry. We have one appointment to catch up with 
one event or the other to catch up with how do we make our time to pray the rosary so that we can make it something qualitative today we see people sit around the television and pray the rosary while uh, there's a prayer of the rosary going on in one television channel or the other that is good but what if we actually try to have a plan of prayer for the rosary especially in the month of october like this so okay at so and so time every day i'll be praying the rosary myself and all my family and i'll pray it for like 30 minutes not 15 minutes most reasons usually say 15 minutes is enough to pray the rosary yes truly if we pray it like that 15 10 minutes will finish it but can we make it more 20 30 minutes by reflecting on the mysteries so we take a time out not just praying it while strolling or in a bus or driving and counting the the finger rosary along as we're driving or putting a, a, a tape a rosary tape while it is being recited we're listening we're driving and we're reciting along it's also good there's it's not um, it's not out of place but something better something more of higher quality so that we can take this time out when we say for example the angel of the lord declared to mary the annunciation how does that affect me how does that speak to me how does that, that do i feel god's angel coming to me to address god's good news to me or pray for all sinners now and at the hour of my death what happens when I'm no longer able to pray at the hour of my death? When the devil begins to come to fight the last battle to snatch me from God? What does it mean each time I say, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of my death? So, we can begin to make it something more profound by giving it quality time, quality attention, and having a gaze and focus. Some people say Catholics, images, statues, but it helps us to raise our minds. So we can see it, maybe before the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So it, 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 it appears to our sentiments. It leads us to begin to see how God related with Mary and how God relates with us. And then we have a focus on what we are doing, which helps to control distraction and really helps us to actually meditate and reflect on what we are saying. So it doesn't just become a repetition of words, but it becomes indeed a prayer we fly to your protection O holy mother of god despise not our prayers in our necessities but deliver us from all dangers whoever glorious and blessed virgin mary our lady of the rosary pray for us bye